maybe you know um, the powers that be, right? You know, yeah. they are thinking that they want to do good, you know, and then um, they have this sort of like good intentions, I would say. But well, perhaps, I suppose you know, to me, a good intention is if you promise to serve the people, mm -hmm. you don't turn around and then rule them. So I wonder whether what you say is true or not, whether there were any good intentions at all. To me, a good intention, you swear to serve, means you serve the people. You don't try to control them. So I was having this yeah. brief conversation mm. with Alfian, like, um, I mean, sometimes the powers that be, you know, they do things, but then on the receiving end, um, you know, it's felt differently. I think maybe you might want to comment on that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so uh, if, if you can clarify, what, what do you yeah. mean by good no. intentions, for example? I, I, right? yeah. I'm not a power that <laughs> yeah. no. I'm trying to be right. like, you know, take yeah. the, the side of, you know. Sure. Yeah, and maybe they, they, they think that they're doing a good thing. Mm -hmm. So, But I think that what um, is interesting is because people on the receiving end yeah. of your uh, actions, you know, may have a different view, yeah. right? <laughs> So, so maybe if, if we talk about censorship, for example, right? So, so the rhetorical justification for it is uh, you're trying to protect the community from, let's say, uh, certain ideas or certain images or whatever, right? So I think uh, I'm not, in general, an absolutist, uh, a free speech absolutist. I, I think there are certain forms of speech, like hate speech, right? So especially when it comes to... Uh, age-appropriate stuff, you want to protect them, sure, from graphic violence and graphic sexual depictions. I agree with those things. I think in Singapore, though, uh, there is an overextension of, that, uh, of the work of the censors. So rather than just sort of protecting minors, for example, from sex or violence, they're also trying to protect minors from, say, political content. Right? So I think that's an example of executive overreach in Singapore. Um, so that's, that's, of course, a very deep problem, right? So, so I, I'm okay when you say, okay, you know, young people shouldn't uh, uh, be exposed to, to all this, as I mentioned, sex violence, but if you say they shouldn't be exposed to certain ideas about decolonization <laughs> or, you know, or opposition politics or whatever, then I think that's, mm -hmm. that's really very problematic because the argument that they usually have is that uh, young people are not mature enough to process these ideas, but my contention is that you'll never be mature until you encounter these ideas in the first place. Mm -hmm. So that process of maturing, right, you will never mature if you're shielded from these ideas your whole life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that's something, for example, that I think the, the censors don't quite get. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone has a want to comment on follow up with what okay. he said? I, I guess on the this whole idea that, oh, maybe they have good intentions. I feel like that's a very common sort of threat even among civil society that sometimes we, we start to feel like, okay, maybe I don't want to be too unreasonable. Mm. Uh, you know, that police officer is also just doing his job. And then like, you start making excuses mm. for like, oh, you know, there's no point being angry at this police officer. He's just doing his job. He's not high ranking enough. He's not the real power. Mm. He's not the real decision maker. And actually, he was very nice to me in interrogation. And then you start to forget that, actually, wait, I am in interrogation. <laughs> I don't need to be sorry for you when you are interrogating me. Mm. And, and so I feel like we, we do that a lot. We end up excusing and making excuses. Mm. Or, like for every case in this book, right, they will come up with some sort of plausible reason to say, oh, it's not oppression, it's just because it's the law, because otherwise there might be a riot or there might be disturbance, we're protecting public safety. And it, and it creates this gaslighting effect of, like, we are not oppressing you, we are just, you know, keeping the peace, you know, being like, and then you end up having to like, not only do you not get solidarity from other Singaporeans, you have to even convince people that you're being oppressed in the first mm. place. Mm. And sometimes I find that even more, ter more tiring than interrogation. <laughs> like, mm. interrogation is very clear. I mean, a police, officer, a police um, interrogation room, this is not fair. But like, then to have to leave the interrogation room and convince people that it was not fair, mm. and then everyone mm. will be like, oh, but why you go and stand there? Why do you go and do this? Why do you provoke them? And mm. then I find that way more tiring. Mm. So sometimes I'm just like, I don't care what your intentions are. That's not fair. Yeah. 